Hello, my name is Mark Polich. As a full-time golf coach for over 15 years, I see students every day who are trying to improve. Many have played for years and are good golfers, but struggle with consistency or are plagued with recurring problems. They hit good shots, they hit bad shots, but they really don't understand what happened when things went wrong, and just as important, they don't really understand what happened when things went right. As a result, they often come to me with the wrong diagnosis and the wrong fix. And it's clear to me that golfers aren't failing to improve because of a lack of commitment or a lack of effort on their part. Most golfers aren't improving because they're trying to fix problems that don't exist. Now I know that in trying to help you improve, many golf instructors focus on making your golf swing look pretty. They will record a video of your swing, compare it to a swing from the hottest professional golfer of the day, and then they'll proceed to compare your body or your club position to that of the touring professional. And the premise that if you could just swing more like Rory or Jordan or Stacy or Lydia, your golf game would improve. Now let me be clear about this. I like a pretty golf swing as much as the next person. But the bottom line is the ball doesn't know and the ball doesn't care how pretty your swing is. You may be surprised at this, but the number four all-time leading money winner on the PGA Tour is Jim Furyk, having earned a whopping $16 million more than the number five ranked professional, Ernie Els. Think about that. Have you ever heard anyone say that Jim Furyk has a prettier swing than Ernie Els? Probably not. Look, improving your golf game is about learning to swing the golf club in a way that provides you with consistent results that you like. Learning what I call your best swing. So how do you improve? My experience has convinced me that the most efficient way to improve is by combining two key elements. First, collecting quantitative, objective data that tells us what the ball is doing and most importantly, why it's doing that. Second, working with an experienced golf coach that can translate this data into swing changes that will get you the results you desire. Today, I want to introduce you to a technology that has been instrumental in improving my ability to help students. A technology that has revolutionized golf instruction more than anything else in the past 50 years. The TrackMan Launch Monitor System. TrackMan provides precision swing and ball flight analysis measured via radar technology. Now I believe that a critical component to improving at golf is to clearly understand the interaction between the club and the ball because ultimately that is what determines where the ball goes whether we're talking about distance or direction and if you make the wrong diagnosis you are starting down that path of trying to fix problems that don't exist. Understanding the club ball interaction is nearly impossible without TrackMan. This isn't something you can see with video and when golfers rely on feel alone they most often get it wrong. You need something quantifiable, something objective, not subjective. You can't see or feel a one or two degree difference in club path or club face or angle of attack while you're swinging the club at 80, 90, or 100 miles an hour. Without TrackMan, you're simply guessing. And I, for one, do not want to guess at something that is important to you as your golf swing. In the hands of an experienced coach, TrackMan is a phenomenal tool for both teaching and learning. TrackMan allows me to identify problems and prepare a plan for change more quickly. TrackMan allows both the coach and the student to see immediately whether the recommended change is making a difference. The beauty of quantitative objective data is that you have something comparative. You can see swing by swing whether you are making progress. Now learning is also quicker with TrackMan 
and facilitates student engagement in problem solving. Because students see the problem and get instant feedback on the impact of the change, they quickly become a partner in the learning process. Now I want to share with you a recent coaching session that illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. And once you see this, I know that you will agree. Using TrackMan is a revolutionary way to improve your golf game. Let's get started. This fellow came into my studio. His name was Justin. He's a former mini tour player, now a head golf professional. He told me he wanted to start playing some competitive golf again. He was ready. So we talked about his golf game, where he was at, and one of the things he told me was that when he played his best golf, he hit a fade. But when he joined the mini tour, tried to make a living as a player, he decided to try to hit a draw. He felt he needed more distance, and that was his way to do it. Now, many years later, he can't control his tee shot. And he said that if I can get off the tee, I can play competitive. So we took a look at his golf swing, and I want to show you the story of what happened with his six iron and with his driver. So I had Justin hit six irons, didn't say anything. So here's his first shot. You can see it went to the right. Here's his second shot. You can see he pulled that one a little bit. Here's his third shot. Pushed it off to the right again. And here's his fourth shot. Hit it to the left. And he said, that's exactly what's happening with me. I'm hitting it right, left, right, left. I just can't control it. So he wanted to know what's going on. So I said, all right, let's take a look. So this shot was the very first one. It went to the right, but now with TrackMan, we can see it actually went 59 feet to the right, 20 yards. So let's look at shot two. Shot two went 24 feet, eight yards left. Let's look at the next shot. This shot went 46 feet, 15 yards to the right. And the fourth shot, 22 feet to the left. So TrackMan is now starting to provide some quantitative numbers. It's not just I hit it a little right, pulled it a little left. So let's keep going. Let's dig in a little deeper. You can see the club path is still so from the inside. What TrackMan will also show us is exactly what the club was doing, what the club face was doing, and it will give us the explanation for why this ball went almost 20 yards to the right. So let's dig in just a little bit deeper. So here's that first shot that Justin hit. We can see from TrackMan that he swung from the inside, which is exactly what you would do if you were trying to hit a draw, but the face angle got left too far open. That ball's going to the right. Swing to the right with an open club face, ball's going right. Okay, let's look at the next shot that he hit. So this next shot went left. You can see the club path is still to the right. Let's dig in just a little deeper with this one. So his club path was from the inside, but the face closed down too much at impact. That caused that ball to go left. And he said, that's exactly what I'm struggling with. Hitting him right, I'm hitting it left, I just cannot control this. So let's go to the next shot. So we then talked about what we need to do to hit a cut. And I asked him, how would you hit a cut? And he said, I'd swing more left. And I said, okay, let's go ahead and swing more left. You can see this club path, instead of being five or six degrees from the inside, was down to seven tenths. He absolutely did it, but that shot went over 20 yards left. That didn't quite work. Let's look at the next shot. So the next shot, he came from the inside and closed the club face too much. That ball went to the left. So we stopped at that point and Justin said, I know what I need to do, I just don't know how to do it. So then we took a video. So let's look at that video. So what we talked about was for a draw, on this downswing we're going to drop the arms a little more to the inside. 
with a cut, we're going to swing a little more along our shoulder plane. This was his before swing. You can see where those arms were deeper. You can see here his arms are higher. Okay, let's look at the next slide here. And you can see on the way down, this was his draw swing where he dropped his hands to the inside. You can see over here, his hands are more to the outside. So I showed Justin that video. He got it. Let's see what happened in the very next swing. So the very next swing, he swung to the left. So this club is now traveling to the left. And if we're going to hit a cut, I need that club traveling from the outside to the inside. However, this ball still went to the left. This went 33 yards to the left. Now, Justin might have been a little concerned, but I wasn't. I knew he was a good player, and I knew he could get this. He just needed a little more help. This was shot nine. Let's look at the next shot. So here's shot 11. He still is coming from the outside, which is what we need for a draw, but that ball is still going too far left. And then we talked about what makes that club face point left or what makes that club face point right. So let's look what happened on the next shot. So you can see now he's got the club path coming from the outside, but now he's controlling the club face a little better. Now he's got that shot shape. Let's look at shot number 13. Shot number 13, he lost it again. He swung to the left, but he didn't control the club face. We saw that. He saw that. He knew the change to make. Let's look at his next swing. So here's shot 14. Got it back. Swung from the outside, starting to control the club face a little bit better. That ball is starting to cut. Let's keep going. Here's shot 15. Ah, it's a little better getting the club to come from the outside, controlling the club face. He just hit this ball 203, 10 feet off line with a little cut. Let's go to the next. So I want to show you the last four shots. We looked at the first four shots. Here's the last four shots. This one, 14 feet off line. Let's go to the 20th shot. 15 feet off line. Let's go to the 21st shot. 1.9 feet off line. Let's go to the 22nd shot. 6.7 feet offline. All right, let's look at this in summary. 22 shots, only 22 shots he took. His first four shots averaged 38 feet offline. Never going to make any money as, with a, as a professional with hitting shots 38 feet offline. Look what happened 22 shots later. These last four shots averaged 9 feet offline. And we did all this in 22 swings. There's no way I could accomplish that. There's no way we could have accomplished that without the feedback from TrackMan. Justin was thrilled, and he said, yeah, but it's my driver that I really need to keep in play. I said, great, let's apply the same principles that we just learned, let's apply it to the driver. So we switched to the driver. So here we go. So here's his very first shot. He swung from the outside, but he closed the club face, and this ball went 40 yards offline. So he got part of it right. He got the path correct, not the face. Let's look at his second shot. Second shot, same thing. It got a little bit worse. So he swung from the outside, but he closed the club face down, and you can see this face is 6.4 degrees left at impact. That ball's going left to left. Let's keep going. Here's shot three. Ah, now he started to get that ball to shape a little bit. Still swung from the outside, but controlled the face a little better. Let's keep going. Here's shot four. Oh, lost it again. Swung from the outside, but closed the club face. So every time Justin swung, he got this feedback. He saw it. He made the adjustments. And he made the adjustments based on quantitative, objective data not based on a feel, which may or may not have been correct. Let's keep going. So here's shot seven. Ah, something good starting to happen here. That ball is shaping a little better. Let's keep going. Shot eight, again, look at this. Hits at 282, 3.8 feet offline. Let's keep going. Shot 13, now he hits at 288, 2.4 feet offline with just a baby cut. And let's go to his final shot. 
So here's his 14th shot with a driver. Hits at 296, 16 feet offline. Beautiful driver. This is what you can do with TrackMan, and you can only do it this quickly with TrackMan. Took us 22 shots with a 6 iron, took us 14 shots with a driver. Justin got it. He saw the information in TrackMan, he felt the changes he had to make, and he executed the changes. You want to get better at golf, you want to get better at golf faster, got to use TrackMan. That's the way you're going to get better faster. Thanks for watching.